This video is primarily about uh, my involvement or my work in refinishing a cabinet for a uh, RCA Victor model A23. Here's a picture of the radio uh, for the service documentation page. The radio is circa 1945 around that era. Uh, this one in particular that I have is actually made in Montreal in Canada by RCA Canada. In this shot, um, this is showing some of the pre-shots. I, I only have still images of the of the radio prior to its refinishing. Um, here we can see a close-up of the uh, RCA Victor logo. And there's some close-ups on the bottom showing the, the volume tuning and range selector. And these will be of significance later because what I'm going to be doing in this video is stripping the entire cabinet down, which includes removing the decals and applying new decals and uh, putting a new finish on it. And I think you'll be happy as well as I was with the uh, results that we end up as. Because I'm actually replacing the decals, one of the things I wanted to do was to create templates. And here we see a, a template for the bottom showing how I determined where the positions of the decals were so that when I was ready I could use the water slide decals uh, to replace these that would be uh, pretty much obliterated by the sanding and they're not going to be recoverable. So in the next um, video we'll uh, start to see the sanding process and then subsequent to that I'll go through how I decided on the choices that I used for the uh, staining and uh, oil based finishing and uh, some results that uh, we see in the final product. So just some shots of the radio chassis, it's ex in exterior and as I've sanded off the finish and put through put the uh, finish through a successive series of uh, sanding starting at uh, 150 or uh, 180 to then 220 and then 320 grit starting off with applying some lacquer thinner to just get most of the initial surface lacquer finish off. As you can see in the close-up shot at the bottom, the, the decals are all gone now and I'll be using reprints to put the decals back on. It's just easier that way. The original decals were half worn off and I can just uh, put a fresh coat on and get a nice finish that way. I kind of like the color of the I believe it's mahogany uh, as is I don't really want to put a lot of darkening on it as you can see when I put some thinner on here to get the color in it has a really nice texturing. It's book matched here so the veneer matches. There was a little bit of marking <clears throat> here. There were some circular stains indicating that there was some um, staining from maybe a cup or some other round based object being put on here. And that's, you can see that happening with watermarks uh, from things like cups or plant holders and other things like that. Most of that has come off though and it's actually looking pretty good. I did apply a little bit of oxalic acid to it after I had gotten um, the lacquer off and uh, sanded and that did seem to help a little bit. Uh, it really depends on whether it's a water damage uh, stain or not. There's a close-up of the sides looking pretty nice. And the plan here I think is to uh, 
use a walnut finish on the front feature here, the speaker grill, and where the dial glass is. And then on here I'll use a lighter Danish oil or tongue oil finish to keep the natural color of it. And it'll give it a nice uh, pop appearance there. Also, I want to keep the, the finish relatively light here so that you can see the the uh, the decals better after they've been put on. And then uh, the final coat, after all that's done, I put some, uh, of course, additional coats of Danish oil finish on and actually buff it out so it's a really nice, clean, uh, glossy surface. And then I'll finish off with some, some lacquer spray on, crystal clear. I think it should look pretty good. I've got the uh, special walnut coating on there now. You can definitely see a difference there. One uh, thing I'd like to do is it's very hard to get into these corners and crevices with a cloth, so I'll take a, a Q-tip and I'll put some of the dye stain on there, the walnut stain, and I'll get into the crevices and I'll just use the, the soaked Q-tip to make sure that I can get the stain into all of the crevices and corners. And then you, once it's on, you just take it clean, or a clean part of the cloth anyway, and uh, wipe the excess stain off. And this will get a, a lacquer finish as a last step, and it'll shine it up a bit. But even with the sanding I did, I'm getting a pretty good finish off of it as it is. There's another shot of it with the masking tape off. Does a pretty good job of delineating the, the line so you don't have to be really, really careful with the stain. You'll get sometimes a little bit of creepage under the tape because the stain's very thin, but this is not that a big of a deal. This was an existing piece right here that I just left in. It really should have been dealt with. I'm going to reapply lacquer thinner to this just to get some of the tape residue off and that may clean that up a little bit as well. Also, failed to mention, but I also did the foot of the carcass, or the, the case, so you can see there that it's been stained. I may actually put a little bit more of a darker stain on the bottom. Let's see how that works. This actually turned out quite well though. I like that. Now here we have the Danish oil coat. This is the first coat on the, uh, the radio. It's already looking really nice. Uh, as I get more layers of Danish oil on here the the patterns will start to pop a bit more. There's uh, there's quite a bit of nice patterning in here that should come out nicely as uh, as the additional layers of Danish oil are applied. This first layer just first seals in the, the wood and prevents the it gets a seal coat in there. Then I'll just do a very light sanding and then another layer of Danish oil. Uh, and repeat. This is the stuff I use for the Danish oil, circa 1850. It's really nice stuff. I, I uh, quite fond of the the the, uh, the light oil finish. It colors it a little bit, gives it a little bit more orange. Um, it's really good on cherry, as well. So I think it's coming out nicely. I'm gonna probably use a little bit of ebony stain on the foot. And I'll put a little bit, a little bit of ebony stain in the corner here. Another trick is to use a black felt pen to sort of put some black or darkness in. I don't know if I'm going to do that. We'll see if the ebony works first. If not, then I might um, touch it up with a pen. But you, you kind of the the traditional look is to have this a little bit darker in here than normal. 
that's usually because this is a veneer over plywood and the the plywood veneer would show up here on the side so we just they would cover this up with a, a darker paint or lacquer to just hide that part of the of the wood you can see there's a void here actually you can see in the plywood perhaps anyway I'll get back once I've got some more layers on here and I'll play around with the uh, the ebony dye stain or the stain and see how that works on the, the edges and the foot I'm doing a little bit of the ebony dye stain touch up on the side now <clears throat> it probably uh, will have to do a final touch up in some cases with uh, with a felt pen but I just wanted to show um, something I like to do to try and get back some of the aging in the in the in the look so that places where there's a little bit of a light transition here where the stain really hasn't penetrated I'll take a little ebony stain and I'll just apply it like that and I'll quickly rub it off wipe it off and this tends to darken up those crevices a little bit and uh, give it a more of a an aged look just to keep it from looking brand new which is not really something I want to go for it's a long shot with the new ebony dye applied it's looking not bad I'm probably going to use a darker stain on the foot I don't really want to use ebony in that case I think it'll be a little bit too dark I'll go with maybe a dark Kona or some other very dark brown or dark red stain see if I can get the effect I'm looking for there so uh, now is the time to put the decals back on the radio uh, cabinet and for this I've decided to use some uh, water decals from radio days there's an up close look at the the info sheet from these <clears throat> I picked up a couple of different models of RCA's so there's the one there one there this is probably the one I'm going to use for the band select and for a future project I picked up a couple of these that show the little victor dog the victory dog and um, the globe and there's some generic power ones <clears throat> in general the, the the decals are pretty good um, there's a couple of problems with the printing I don't know if you can see that but if you look up really close you may see some lines at the top of the volume there with some printing problems and for that reason I decided to not use these volume decals here although I'll use the range select uh, cabinet prep I did um, two coats of lacquer and then I wet sanded it down 600 grit to flatten it the, just from the, the look of look of it uh, looks like it's gonna be a pretty nice final coat that I'm gonna get on here the sides are really looking nice it looks a little uh, flat right now because of the wet sanding but um, I like to do that just to level out the the lacquer and so when the final coat goes on it looks really nice prior to stripping this down and removing the old decos I came up with some uh, templates that I use I may have shown this in a previous shot but the templates go over here and they help me to locate where the decals will go in these uh, slots here so I just uh, lined up the template that I made with the RCA Victor 
uh, decals that I picked up and it's a pretty close match for the band select not surprisingly because the, the mechanical switch is, is fairly common and it's going to have regular detents at fixed angles and that, that, that's going to be a pretty common thing. The, the range is a bit high so I'll cut that out separately and actually move that over differently. I might actually just cut this out as one group and then put them on. I think that might be a little bit of a better idea. So I've cut out the decals that I'm going to use. I decided to cut them out individually. I should be able to take the decals and uh, move them component by component in, get them where I want them, and then uh, squeegee out the water. So let's try. I say to soak them for about five seconds, lukewarm water, wait for about 20 seconds. Well, uh, for the water to soak in, and then uh, slide the decal off. You can't see it in the shot, but what I'm doing is I'm just dipping them in water. I just poke it with the, on the end of a X-Acto knife. Dip it in the water for five seconds. And then put it on the radio to be positioned. So the uh, A-band should be ready about now. So I'm going to... Uh, Yeah, it's already ready to slide off. Come nicely. Get off the paper. Let's see how far we are off. Quite a bit. Pretty good. They're all wanting to slide off now. Next one would be 31 meters. Yeah. I was going to need a redo, I think. I'm going to redo that one. Five 
five meters. Also, looks like it got a bit mangled. We might be able to save it. Ah, there we go. Five meters. No. No, that one's also going to. So I've come up with a technique that helps me a little bit um, to get these things on because they can be finicky, as people have <laughs> known in the past, doing slide on decals for model planes and things like that. But I think I've got the tuning fairly tied in. Now the volume is a bit higher than I wanted, but it's not. I'm not going to worry about it too much. The, the knobs are not that big. The tuning is uh, okay. It could be a little bit higher. But what I did was I took on the left-hand side of the paper, I actually cut a strip off on the top and peeled it back. So I can actually pull the paper out from underneath without touching the actual surface decal, which is very, very thin. And I've got it in place now. All I have to do is just slide the paper out from underneath the deco. Easy, hey? Not a problem. Uh, not so easy. One thing also I forgot, <laughs> because it's been a long, long time since I've done this, is that uh, you need a little water on the surface too. I shouldn't really be using my hand, but that works a lot better. Like that. And just use a brush to try and squeegee out the water. And that should be good. As long as the stupid decal doesn't stick to the back of this. It's actually a little high. A little to the right. I'm gonna leave it because trying to move that at this point is just uh, uh, looking for trouble. It's just going to wreck it. So that's good enough. I'll come back when I've got the rest of these done. I'm still gonna probably do them one bit at a time, but I'll use this new technique to slide the paper out from underneath the decal instead of trying to move the decal around which is almost impossible so i'll be back in a bit i've got the final decal on now uh, that's this top logo here rca victor what i ended up doing was uh, i've got several choices in the r logo here i've got a, a larger one here Uh, another form here without the, the the dog and the the globe, and then I had a smaller one here with the dog and the globe, and then a smaller sized font. So I decided to go with the smaller sized font and strip off the top logo because the original radio doesn't have that logo on it. So I try to keep it as original as I can. You can see how it's laid on there. Pretty good. I used that technique to slide it off using a by lightly scoring one side of the paper and taking the top decal off. Some squirrels having some fun there. We got about three or four squirrels just hanging around. I think the neighbor feeds them, which is a no-no, but they get a little squirrely sometimes. Pun intended. So there's the volume. They're not too happy about the tuning there, but uh, I'll live with it. Um, it could be a little bit further over. I mean, you, you can use the the joint where the two veneers. The veneers are book matched, so there's a joint line here. You can use that as a center line, of course, and it's a little bit to the right, but I'll, I'll live with it. <laughs> I'll somehow sleep at night. 
and then here we have the the logos that worked out pretty good using the template so i recommend that as a way to locate them you can see here with the template on uh, let's get in the shot you can see that they're lining up pretty good the range is a little off but then again i'm not going to lose a lot of sleep over that that worked out pretty good i'm pretty happy with that it, considering i haven't done any work with decals in probably 25 years that's not bad maybe 30 probably more than 30. anyway uh, i will do a couple last coats of lacquer on this and uh, we'll see how it looks at the after the final coat so here we have the the RCA uh, cabinet finished. I think it turned out pretty good. I've got two layers of lacquer on there that I put on after I put on the, uh, the water decals. Some points that I'd like to show is that uh, I mentioned a little bit earlier about some areas of the finish, uh, the wood finish that I would think would uh, pop, as I said. What I was referring to is um, an effect called scatoyance, which is uh, something that's seen in highly figured woods and also gemstones or other uh, types of uh, rock formations. And uh, as an example of that, I think we can get a picture of it here. If you take a look carefully in this corner here, as I, I tilt it, you'll see some changes to the uh, to the wood and, and there's a more s significant effect as you uh, change the camera angle and this is kind of showing up all over the case to a, a greater and lesser extent so I'm really happy with that this is a high gloss lacquer finish which allows the uh, this effect to occur you have to get the optical refract uh, reflectance or the refractance factor uh, close to the natural wood in the, in the finish to sort of get this appearance so I'm pretty happy with that there's a, a shot of the the RC Victor label and let's get some shots of the, the resulting. Water decals. An ongoing topic of contention is uh, that white thing there. And I have to make a decision on whether to keep that or not. That is um, a sheet of asbestos. And asbestos is uh, particularly given a bad rep <laughs> these days. Uh, one has to be fairly careful with that. And it's common in the old RCA wooden radios of the era. Um, because back then they, they thought of asbestos as just a, a very handy flame proof material and the reason why it's on the bottom of the chassis is because the cabinet is wooden and the bottom of the tube radio chassis is open so simple solutions to that would be to remove this and then put down some metal sheeting to protect the wood other alternatives would be to uh, cover up the asbestos there's a couple of different ways of doing that i've seen some products out there that you can kind of like an epoxy you, you so it soaks into the uh, asbestos i'm kind of leaning towards just removing it and putting some some metal sheeting down just as um just getting it out of the radio altogether and especially if i want to resell it later on i'm not really too keen on the idea of having uh, a product with asbestos in it going out to someone else they may not know about it they may take the chassis out. 
disturb the asbestos and yeah things get downhill from there so I'm gonna just gonna put the glass in clean it up a little bit then I'll come back and show it with the uh, the radio dial glass installed so now we have uh, the dial glass installed I uh, managed to clean it up without affecting the the decals I don't think this is going to focus very well. For reference, this is how the decal is, um, or the the glass is installed inside the cabinet. So you have securing hooks or little spring clips on the left and the right. There's two of them. The cardboard is used uh, as a get light guide. There's uh, two bulbs on either side of the, the dial that are used to uh, light up the back of the glass. And so that has to be installed. I put a little tape on the clips just as insurance. The last thing I want to do is crack this glass. So I was very, very careful about getting this back inside. It's a little bit askew, actually. I'm not going to touch it. I'm just going to leave it. <laughs> I'd rather let it just be like half a degree off of uh, flat rather than risk you know trying to screwdriver and move the glass around and somehow get it aligned and then chipping it or cracking it it's just not worth it <clears throat> that's a shot of the inside of the chassis and there's the uh, the label tube layout and the model number and just for reference I didn't uh, show this before but there's a bit of providence that comes with the radio this is a warranty and I'm assuming that this is either for repair or for the original um sale I, i'm guessing it's probably a repair there's the uh, unfortunately there's no year on this but it's june 14th from this location on in victoria which is on vancouver island and this is the ubiquitous warning that uh heaven forbid you operate a a radio without the express permission of the king he's gonna get a little mad this was uh, something that happened during World War two where um, they they were um, Canada was requiring license radios to be licensed uh, for use a similar to the way that the TVs and radios are still licensed in in, in Britain Great Britain the UK but uh, Canada has since dropped that. We don't have to have a license to operate a radio or a TV in this country. I think it was mainly done as a, a counter-espionage effort. So they were trying to um, root out spies that were maybe using a, a wireless set to, to contact their mother country and, uh, you know, divulge great Canadian secrets during the war. Anyway, I'm going to probably wrap up the the this series i don't want to get it too long so i just want to sort of show it off and show some of the techniques that i use to sort of restore the wood on the cabinet i think it turned out pretty good anyway i hope everybody's doing okay in these times and uh doing well and um going to sign off watch the squirrels and uh Wishing everybody well in these times. Uh, take care. Bye. Just to wrap up this video, I'd like you to introduce you to the A23's big brother, the M47A. Hands up anybody that like to see me uh, do full restoration on this one. This one's got a magic eye tube. <laughs>